Good day folks, I'd like to talk to you today about a concept here I've been looking at. Basically some people have hinted at this before and experimented it with their own ways. So uh, what comes to mind is a lot of people remember Gerald Moray. And basically he came to conclude, especially with the pig pole transformers, that something interesting happens at high frequency, especially if you pulse them a certain way very much in line with the Tom Bearden philosophies at high frequency. Uh, basically he noticed that if you put a load like one ohm on there and uh, you increase the, um, the frequency, the uh, input um, current re gets reduced essentially. So it appears that there's an increase in efficiency. So basically in a motor context this would be a state of hysteresis. So he went on and he moved on to basically taking these ideas and incorporating it into a motor. So essentially what he was getting at is, hey folks, when the motor speeds up, the resistance goes down. And when it gets close to zero, it gets more efficient. So he just decided to build a generator around that concept, but essentially using the same ideas. Now, what's very confusing for a lot of people is an increase of current efficiency doesn't necessarily mean over unity on its own like Tom Bearden describes you got to do something with that so he described the asymmetrical regaging which is dead on so essentially if we give the system a very small trigger and gate the current we could observe our potential gains and Tom Bearden knows it very more than anyone is it's all about the pure potentials that's how you can get your true current at the end so what you want to do essentially is basically we can um, this is a circuit that I've corrected that essentially um, uses the high frequency concept it takes the Gerald Morin pig pole transformer concept and a little bit of the Bedini inductive kickback but we're setting it up as an auto transformer more or less and using the um, inductance through the um, through the um, auto transformers property instead so a little bit different than the um, Bedini kind of switching but very similar in a way so basically at high frequency what we're doing is we're creating that inductive kickback and what we're doing is with MOSFETs we can switch it very very um, tightly and we also are able to pulse the inductive kickback which comes back in reverse so when it comes back in reverse we have our third MOSFET basically that switches on but only long enough to allow for the pure potential spike of that inductive kickback so a lot of that energy gets held back so there's a lot less needed in the re-energization cycle and ironically Gerald Morin came to the same conclusion that you could use cores and that increases the inductive cup couplings and increases the efficiency but at the cost that you're going to need a little bit more power to energize the core in other words you're going to use a bit of power to saturate so if you don't want to do that you don't need to do that at the expense of building a larger coil core air core coil basically so more mass to it and you make up for it in the inductance and then you're able to have the same effects without quote unquote wasting that uh, saturation energy that you would need so of course in the context sometimes a core is good sometimes it's not as good depending on what it is you want to do so Mr. Moran knew all this and was trying to explain it to us in his own words now we can use this concept those who like especially for me I'm not too too good at especially with the lack of equipment in a shop to start working with mechanical concepts Mr. Moore I wanted to go for the big power stuff really really big stuff but anyone basically could experiment on a smaller scale with this concept using a few batteries a couple transformers and some MOSFETs and go completely solid state and observe the same uh, anomalies and work with them if you follow the circuit it should work well and it gives us the chance to experiment with different coils and I put in there you know you could also take advantage of the velocity factor of a coax coil to further gate that current so that could be even more gain if it's done right so um, 
I just thought I'd put that in there because no one ever talks about velocity factor slowing down the signal and the coax and it's exactly what Tom Bearden was talking about so perhaps this is a better way to even get more gain out of the system so more experimentation is needed and what I'd like to do is essentially because I have these tremors not too aggressive but just enough like especially working with 555 timer circuits I've tried before folks and even with the sockets and that when I try to work you know if it's anything you know um, tighter than maybe one eighth of an inch I just can't get the precision with my it's always a steady little tremor that's just enough to screw everything up for me so maybe send it out to DigiKey or something and print out a few um, PCB boards complete with this because it's not that many part maybe others will want to do the same and I keep asking people if they wanted it for support to help me if they can well this is a way too if you want to experiment with this and you're gonna get a few PCBs well it'd be really nice if you can send me one as well you know so I could experiment with it would make things a little quicker but either way I will get to it it's just that would help people sometimes ask what they could do to help well there's one thing here that could be good for me and good for you so that's where I'm at and I want to share the circuit with you and I think I have pretty well covered the uh, concept of it uh, using it in the Gerald Morin perspective a little bit of Tom Bearden here and a little bit of what we recently learned with velocity factors and what's available today for switching and things like that so with that said folks I'll leave it up to you and let me know like always what you think and thank you for watching folks